Hey everyone, I'm Josh Jeffrey with Caroline Performance Training and today we're talking about some strength assessments I use to determine what to prioritize in my athletes training programs. So first I want to preface this by saying that before you load up anyone in any of these patterns uh, in terms of trying to figure out a one rep max, which a lot of these are one rep max tests, make sure to put them through a thorough movement analysis and really assess are they prepared to handle these one rep max tests. So all my athletes go through a movement assessment where I determine they have the, the range of motion needed for what I'm going to ask them to perform. And then also I want to see can they control their body weight and space? Can they control light loads relative to their body weight? And then I get into more of the stuff on the board here. So I work primarily, primarily with CrossFitters and functional fitness athletes and this is something I I use uh, to really drive their programs. So uh, I have a few things on this far column over here that I'm going to assess relative to their body weight. Uh, I think these are really important before I move on to more dynamic movements. So for, for me, I have rear foot elevated split squat up there. So I want to be able to, I want to see the athlete be able to perform eight reps with a third of their body weight in each hand. So uh, if they are a 180 pound individual, I want them to be able to do eight split squats, rear foot elevated split squats, per leg holding 60 in each hand. Then I also will assess weighted pull-ups and weighted dips prior to implementing any kind of kipping variations there. Uh, again, just to ensure that we're preventing injury. We all know the dangers of implementing kipping pull-ups or things like that before someone has a requisite amount of strength. Uh, but the same thing can happen as we saw with all the pec injuries at regionals. I wanna make sure that uh, this person really is prepared to start uh, going into these kipping variations and dips as well. So for me, I have a male and female standard. So I'd like all of my male athletes to be able to perform a strict pull up or a strict dip with 33% of their body weight attached to them as external load. Uh, so that same 180 pound individual would need to be able to perform a strict pull up and a strict dip with 60 pounds attached to them. And then the uh, for females, I like to see 20% of their body weight uh, in terms of external load for a weighted pull up and a weighted dip. If they can pass all these, I feel a lot more comfortable moving on to either a heavier load or more dynamic type activities. So that's my first step I like to check. And then I move into some lower body and upper body assessments here. So for this lower body assessment, there are five things that I'm going to look at primarily. The big one is this back squat. That's going to be my 100%. I'm going to compare everything to that. And that will give me kind of an idea of what I need to prioritize. So if my back squat's 100, for my population that I'm dealing with, I like to see deadlift be more like 125%. So if you back squat 200 pounds, I'd like to see a 250-pound deadlift. If you back squat 400, you should be pulling close to 500. For me, that's a, a, a good representation of balance. Uh, similarly, I compare the back squat and the front squat, and that front squat needs to be about 85% of that back squat. So again, if someone's deadlift is very close to their back squat and their front squat is very close to their back squat, that tells me, okay, they might be using their quads really well, but they might struggle when it turns into getting into their posterior chain. Uh, things like the, looking at these ratios will allow you to determine, okay, what does this athlete need to prioritize? Also, if their front squat is much lower than it, it needs to be, it might be something to dive into in terms of positioning. Uh, so it kind of cues you to say, okay, I need to look into this. Similarly, I look into power cleans and power snatches and I also compare those to back squats. So uh, the reason I use power cleans and power snatches in terms of this assessment is it takes out some of the complexity of the movement. I don't want this ratio to be skewed because someone's technique isn't great. Uh, that's a whole nother assessment when we're looking at their efficiency of their Olympic lifting technique. This is simply to determine where the athlete sits on a strength uh, to uh, you know strength to speed continuum, how well their absolute strength is versus their hip speed. So uh, I'd like to see two thirds of their back squat as a power clean. I want them to power snatch at least half their uh, half their back squat. So I put 51% up here. So if someone's power clean is 80% and their power snatch is 70% of their back squat, that tells me right, this person probably needs to get stronger. Uh, but then also, on the other hand, if their power snatch is 40% and they're barely clean in half their back squat, that tells me, okay, this person might have a good amount of absolute strength, but either we need to address technique or uh, you know, try to make them a little bit more explosive. Uh, so that's kind of a, a quick little lower body assessment that I'll, I'll do with my athletes. And then I move into more of this upper body assessment. So in terms of vertical pushing and pulling, I compare a weighted pull-up and a strict press. 
Now the weighted pull up, I use kind of a global vertical pulling number here. So body weight plus external load and then uh, strict press. Uh, it was just a standing strict shoulder press and I like to compare these. So whatever your weighted pull up is, that total score, I like to see a press of about 65%. You'll often see a, a big discrepancy here and it will let you know if you need to focus more on it, uh, you know, pushing or pulling in your program. Similarly, I like to test close grip bench press. Um, you know, it seems to me that oftentimes you'll see a close grip bench that's very close to a weighted pull up in someone that's balanced. And believe it or not, you also see a close grip bench that's very close to a power clean. Uh, again, that's kind of uh, a ratio that's a little unexpected. Uh, but for me, the main reason I'm testing close grip bench is to get some other assessments from it. So while I have this ratio, the weighted pull up and the strict press, 165%. I set a new 100% from my close grip bench to assess a couple other things. First being a seated dumbbell shoulder press. So this, the athlete's sitting down, they're starting with more of a neutral grip, and they finish with a little bit of pronation at the top, so they end up being at the top, uh, with a little bit of interrotation, I should say. And uh, that, I want to see a third of their close grip bench, or sorry, 30% of their close grip bench in each hand. Again, I tested with this rear foot split squat, a little bit of their unilateral lower body strength, uh, but then when I move to this uh, strict press, it's a little bit of unilateral upper body strength. So uh, seated dumbbell press, I like to see where that sits relative to the close grip bench press. And then also, I do some tests to s assess some strength of, uh, say, the muscles that control your scap. So. Uh, I test a seated dumbbell external rotation, a Powell raise, which is sideline, straight arm, and then a trap three, which is a little bit leaning forward, you know, having a support forward, and you're kind of in that scaption plane. So uh, I test all of these, and I'd like to see someone be able to perform six repetitions with 10% of their close grip bench max. So uh, that may seem a little bit high, but for me, I really like to look uh, at the, the strength of those muscles to ensure that they can really control, uh, you know, control movement of that scap when I'm going to be putting a ton of demand uh, in terms of high volumes of repetitions and more dynamic repetitions in this population. Uh, also, these metrics are here are not one rep max. We have six when it comes to the seated dumbbell press. Uh, and then we also have, uh, and again, that's two arms. And then these scap tests here are, are eight reps on each arm. Uh, again, those are percentages off your close grip bench press. So uh, again, this is very short, quick. You can have your athlete complete this over a few days, uh, depending on how you structure it. Uh, and it allows you to determine uh, what kind of things you need to prioritize initially when you're designing a training program.